Hello, and welcome to this video in which I will demonstrate how to build a simulation from scratch in vSIM using the visual setup. I will show you how to construct a simulation from the Corona Discharge example, which is one of the examples that comes with the installation software. This tutorial series consists of five short videos. After watching this tutorial series, you should have a good handle on how to set up your own simulation. In this video, I will provide you with a brief explanation of the physics of Corona Discharge. I will then demonstrate how to modify the basic settings so that the simulation is solving the problem with the correct physics included. Finally, I will show you how to include constants and parameters and discuss a few relevant ones to this simulation. Corona Discharge can occur whenever a potential difference is established between two boundaries. These boundaries could be conductors or they could be dielectrics. In my example, one boundary is a conductor and the other is a dielectric. In order for corona discharge to occur, a free electron must have already formed through some process, such as from a stray cosmic ray or from UV light. This happens fairly frequently, but at normal atmospheric pressure when no potential difference exists, the electron is reabsorbed by a neutral. If a potential difference does exist, then the electron is accelerated bombards another neutral, creating more free electrons, and a cascade effect is launched. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with setting up this simulation. So I'm going to uh, open up a new simulation. So you're going to go to your the directory where you have installed vSIM and go ahead and open up a new a new vSIM simulation. Okay, so we'll go to uh, we'll go up to file, we'll click on file and then we'll hover over new and then we'll open up a new simulation. It's a good idea to save your simulation. so that you can save the prog your progress. Okay, so a, for a, a good place to start is under the basic settings option over in the elements tree. So this area to the left is called the elements tree. So if you click on basic settings, you can make this area bigger by sliding this region up and down and then if we go to the field solver, which is about two thirds of the way down and double click on electromagnetic, we will change this to electrostatic. And then um, under the particles option, we'll click on no particles. Well, we'll click on include particles in order to include particles in our simulation. And then for the collisions framework, we'll double click where it currently says no collisions, it will click on reactions. Okay, so now that we've modified the basic, um, the basic settings tab, we'll click, we'll click on, we'll expand some the constants tab, and then we can see some constants that come predefined with every vSIM simulation. I could add my own constants by right clicking on the last predefined constant and just click on user defined. Now if you know you're going to add a whole bunch, then you can click on clone, number of copies. I'm oh, sorry, let's go back. You can um, do create clones and then you can make a whole bunch of um, new constants and then you can rename them if you want. So if you double click on constant zero then we can rename this whatever you want. So I'm going to create a new constant called elect underscore temp and this will be my electron temperature. You can give it a description by double clicking uh, in the region next to description and just type your description. And this will be my electron temperature in EV. 
Okay, and then of course you can do exactly the same thing with all of your, or very similar things with all of these um, dummy constants that I created. Okay, and then now we can add a parameter. We can right click on the word parameters and add a user defined parameter. So let's go ahead, we can double click on parameter zero and rename it. And we'll call this the electron thermal velocity, V thermal E. Okay, and then we'll put in the description. So a parameter is a value that depends on other constants and parameters. So this will be, you'll need a, some sort of functional relationship. So I have to convert electron temperature to joules. So there's a predefined constant called LM charge of the elementary charge. And there's another um, predefined constant called elect mass, the electron mass. And there is my thermal velocity in meters per second. Okay, so let's go ahead and save our progress by clicking on Save and Setup in the upper right hand corner. Okay. So let's take a look at a few of the constants and parameters that are already defined um, or that are defined in the corona discharge example. Okay, so um, if we expand the constants tab, then um, let's just take a look at a few of these constants. So um, one of the constants that I've already defined is the gas pressure in TOR. So um, this is pretty self-explanatory. This is your gas pressure in TOR. And actually the whole simulation scales to this parameter. So this is a very, or to this constant. So this is a very important one and I'll explain why in just a minute. I also have a constant called sigma, which is the largest cross section um, for the collision that we've included. So if we go down here to parameters, I've redefined the gas pressure and I put it in pascals because that's the SI unit for pressure. And then I use this pressure to define or to um, calculate the gas density using the ideal gas law. So this is in a number per meter cubed. And then I find what is the smallest mean free path uh, which is 1 divided by the largest cross-section divided by the gas density. So you can see that my mean free path depends on a constant, sigma, and another parameter called gas density. Now, the vSIM uses the direct simulation Monte Carlo method. And in order to get the physics of a collision correct, we have to resolve the smallest mean free path, which means that my dx, dy, and dz, my grid size, uh, can be no larger than my mean free path in order to get the collisional model, the physics of the collisional model correct. And so that's what I mean. So that's what I set dx to. I set dx equal to mean free path. And then down here I've also got dy uh, and dz um, here. So those are all equal to the mean free path. And really they should be like the mean free path divided by 2. So I've set my grid size to be the largest it can be and still get the physics correct. But to be really safe, you should set them to be about half. Okay, and so if I change, um, if I change the gas pressure and tor here, then the whole simulation will scale. It'll, the grid size will get smaller or larger depending on this gas pressure. A few other parameters which set up, help set up the geometry um, um, are things like, let's see where they are. Things like the radius of the sphere, so that's the radius of this here, which is a conductor. Um, this, um, the cylinder, which is a dielectric. So I've got some, ge some constants and parameters that have been defined which go into setting up the geometries that I've included 
uh, in this simulation. Okay, so that covers um, constants, parameters, and the basic settings uh, um, tab. And so next time, in the next video, we will continue uh, setting up this simulation and going over how this simulation is set up. Thank you for watching.